What's up everybody and welcome to our first instructional video for YouTube. We've done a lot of these for TikTok, but they're much shorter videos. I want to get a little more in depth here. So today we're going to be doing this really nice, beautiful, very simple bruschetta. Uh, do you normally pronounce it bruschetta? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Because honestly, most people don't even realize that bruschetta really translates from Italian to toppings on bread. It has more to do with this than it has to do with this. So, why don't you hang out? If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like this video, share with your friends, give us a virtual high five, and we're gonna be right back to show you a few tips to make this very simple, very delicious item for you and your friends. So the first thing I do, I don't know if you've noticed yet, I have plastic wrap straight across my workstation here. And I do that because I'm lazy. I don't want to clean anymore. We've cleaned the counter. It is nice, clean, wiped, sanitized. That's where this ends. I don't want to do it anymore. So we wrap the entire area with plastic wrap. When we're done here, we're just going to rip that up, throw it out, and go on about our day. So the next thing I'm going to do here, I have a damp paper towel. I'm just going to set that down underneath my cutting board. And I'm going to do that because I don't want to cut a finger off. So that keeps the board from moving. I'm trying to push this board, it's not going anywhere. And that will make sure that while you're cutting, uh, in conjunction with sharp knives, that you're not gonna cut yourself. So for your vegetables and herbs today, we have some tomatoes here, we have some red onion, some nice fresh basil, and some cloves of garlic. We have some other ingredients for later, but that's all we're gonna be working with to start. And I have two separate knives here. I have a nice classic chef knife, and I have a serrated knife. The reason I have both is I will not use a chef's knife on tomatoes. It dulls your blade very quickly, and it's annoying because I don't like sharpening knives every three minutes. So the first thing you wanna do for your tomatoes, get your serrated knife, and you're just gonna make slices. Very simple, very basic slices with your tomato. You have your bowl here, which is where all your ingredients are gonna go. I am now going to dice the tomatoes to get them out of it. So now after cutting your tomatoes, your board's gonna be a disaster, but cutting the tomatoes is the way I gauge how much of everything else I wanna use. So, damp paper towel over your board, and you'll be able to cut everything else without everything being gross. So for anyone counting at home, out there in YouTube land, that was five tomatoes. Uh, I'm not gonna give you an exact recipe for anything I do here uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, how you like things is gonna be different from how I like things. So I encourage you to taste. Uh, and secondly, I don't want to teach you to be someone who can read and follow directions, because you probably can already do that. I want you to really get your palate going. I want to teach you to taste food and find out what you like, what you want to continue to do, what types of things drive you in the kitchen. Uh, just a quick story before I move on. My grandfather, a carpenter by trade, was a fantastic cook. Fantastic. And he had recipes, he had many books of recipes, handwritten recipes everywhere, but he was also able to taste something and recreate it. So I'll leave names of restaurants and everything out. We went to a Italian seafood restaurant once in Florida and we got the mussels marinara or something similar to it. And he really liked it. He asked them for the recipe. They said that they weren't able to do that. It was, you know, against the chef's wishes, whatever. Um, so right then he instructed all of us to stop eating. He boxed up the rest of what we had, he took it home. The very next day, for dinner, <laughs> as a little pre-meal uh, appetizer, he had these mussels prepared. And they tasted exactly the way that the ones from the restaurant did. It's important to develop your palate for that reason, because you can find things in places that you love, and you can recreate them at home and make them your own. So next, moving on to our onion. Uh, every onion has a side that's connected that you could tell is holding it together. And then a side that isn't, I've already sliced that side off. That is the side you wanna slice off. So I know, looking at the amount of tomatoes I have, that I'm only gonna need maybe a quarter of this onion, maybe slightly more. So what I wanna do is I wanna cross section, I'm gonna make kind of a checkerboard pattern into this onion. And after that, I'm then gonna make my slices. So not sure if you can see, but now that checkerboard pattern is in there, I'm gonna go ahead and slice, and you're gonna see that it's going to make Nice, uniform, diced onion on the board. So moving on to the garlic. Uh, peeling garlic is a real pain in the butt. I don't enjoy doing it, but 
The easiest way that I've found to do it is you take your chef's knife, lean it on your garlic, give it a smack. Now, all of that skin comes off very, very easily. Our final fresh ingredient here is basil. Uh, a lot of people probably would just chop this up finely and throw it in. I prefer to chiffonade, one, because it looks cool, and second, because it sounds cool. So you're gonna layer your leaves from largest to smallest, and then you just wanna tuck and roll as tightly as possible. So we're just gonna roll it over to the end here. Now we have a nice tight little roll. And then we're just gonna give very thin slices. And as we're doing that, you're gonna see when it comes apart, I'm gonna show you in a second here, it just looks really awesome. It has a great look to it, and I just enjoy it a lot. So you get this nice, you know, wavy kind of thing here, and it, it looks cool. I, I think it's a fun addition. Up until this part of the process, this is what we're looking at. Really nice, vibrant colors. There's a lot of juice in there from the tomatoes, and we're gonna go ahead and get our other ingredients together and get them added. All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish up our topping here. So we have the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna use some salt. We're gonna use some pepper. We are gonna use some grated Parmesan cheese, and we have some white balsamic glaze. I prefer white balsamic glaze for this, especially this step, because it doesn't bleed. The dark balsamic ends up changing the whole color of your mixture, and it doesn't look as nice to me, and I'm not having that. So we're gonna start with the salt. For me personally, and I believe for you as well, you should always pour your salt and pepper into your hand and then work it in from there because then you can gauge how much you actually need and now it's not gonna be too salty or have too much pepper. All right, now for the pepper. Same concept, we're just looking right now for a visual look. After we do this, we're gonna have to give it a taste and then we're gonna find out, is that enough or do we need more? Now for this step, grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, the quality is not quite as good as shredded, which I am using later, but I don't like the way the shredded mixes into this. It doesn't give off enough flavor. So we use some of this grated Parmesan. We're just gonna go ahead, eyeball it, and again, once we taste, we'll know if it's enough. And lastly, just some of this white balsamic glaze. Uh, I purchased the glaze because it's a longer step and I'm being lazy. Very easy to make though. If you don't want to purchase this, get yourself some white balsamic or if you're going to make the dark, get dark balsamic vinegar and you're going to heat it up and then reduce it and add sugar as you go. And once your consistency reaches more of a glaze than a vinegar, you're there. So we're just going to add a little bit of this in. It's just to sweeten it a little bit and add to the flavor. So there's a little bit of everything on the spoon here. We have to taste to make sure it's right. And it is. It really is. So now our topping is complete. This is what we're looking at. Now we're gonna pull out that bread and we're gonna get going. All right, so we got a nice loaf of bread here. When selecting your bread, what you wanna do is find one that's crispy, but also has some give in the center. That's how I prefer it at least. And what I wanna do is cut on a bias. Not super extreme, but just enough that you're creating a little bit more surface space for your topping. So you end up with these nice, longer, beautiful looking pieces of bread. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this cut up. We're gonna throw it in the oven, get a nice little crisp on it. You can broil them in the oven, which is what I'm gonna be doing today. You can also get them over open flame on the grill. That's also very nice. But for today, I don't wanna leave this area because I'm having so much fun with you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and use the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and set the oven to broil. And I have nothing done to this bread at all. And I'm gonna tell you why that is in just a second. The dish bruschetta in Italy was originally created or, you know, traditionally done because they wanted to test the quality of their olive oil. So what they would do was toast this bread and then as it comes out, you get a clove of garlic and give it a nice rub over the bread and then you use your olive oil to top that. All right, so now we got these out of the oven. Nice little toast on there, it looks really good. I'm gonna get my garlic here, just give it a rub. You can hear it crunch a bit, it's a nice sound. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is almost a liquefied layer from the garlic. It's really nice. So now if you have a wide mouth open for your olive oil, like I do, I just put my thumb over top. I don't want to get too much oil out at once and just a little bit of a drizzle. And then if you have to, just go ahead and use your finger and go ahead and cover the rest. All right, we've reached our final stage. We're gonna put it together. So I took three pieces here of our bread. I'm gonna go ahead, get my spoon, and just kind of spoon over some of my mixture here. You can use more, you can use less, that's up to you. But this is how much I like to use. And if you get a little bit on the plate, it's just fine. It just looks pretty. 
Now I like to use dark balsamic for this stage. It looks a lot better when it goes over top. The white, you kind of lose. The dark, you get a nice even coat, nice color. And the flavor is fantastic. Here we go. And now we change over to our shredded cheese. It just presents a lot nicer. It's not even necessary. The flavor in the mixture is great, but we want it to look beautiful, present nicely for your friends, for your guests, for your family, for yourself, wherever you're feeding. So this is a great appetizer, a great party item, a great thing to eat as a snack, at home alone, whenever, however you want it. Try it out for yourself and find out.